Can the United States really stop a weapon that doesn't fly like a missile, doesn't fall like a ballistic warhead, and doesn't follow predictable paths? As Iran introduces hypersonic glide vehicles into its growing missile arsenal, a critical question emerges for Washington and its allies. Do current U.S. missile defense systems actually have what it takes to intercept these next-generation threats? Now, we break down the technology, the challenges and the uncomfortable realities behind hypersonic missile defense. Hypersonic glide vehicles or HGVs are not traditional ballistic missiles. Instead of following a predictable arc into space and back down, these vehicles, separate from a booster, glide within the upper atmosphere, travel at speeds above Mach 5, maneuver laterally and vertically. This combination of speed, altitude and maneuverability is exactly what breaks traditional missile defense logic. Iran's newest systems including platforms derived from the Fatah program are designed to exploit this gap. They don't just fly fast, they fly unpredictably. U.S. missile defense was built to defeat ballistic threats, not gliders. Current systems include ground-based mid-course defense, GMD, Aegis SM-3 interceptors, THAAD, Patriot Pac-3. These systems rely on predicting where a warhead will be then placing an interceptor in its path. But hypersonic glide vehicles don't cooperate. They stay below space-based tracking envelopes, above traditional air defense zones, and constantly change course. This creates a massive tracking and engagement gap. You can't intercept what you can't track. Even advanced radars struggle to maintain a continuous lock on a fast, low-flying, maneuvering object. That's why the U.S. is racing to deploy space-based infrared tracking layers, hypersonic and ballistic tracking space sensors, multi-domain sensor fusion. But here's the catch. Many of these systems are still not fully operational. Iran's hypersonic programs may be arriving before defenses are ready. Intercepting an HGV isn't just about speed, it's about geometry, timing, and guidance precision. Most U.S. interceptors were designed to hit predictable trajectories, engage during boost or mid-course, rely on ballistic physics. HGVs force defenses into terminal phase interception where engagement windows are seconds long, interceptors must match extreme maneuvering, miss distance tolerance is razor thin. Future concepts like glide phase interceptors GPI aim to solve this, but they remain developmental. Right now interception is possible in theory, but unreliable in practice. Iran doesn't need to defeat missile defense perfectly. It only needs to overwhelm it by combining hypersonic glide vehicles, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, drone saturation, electronic warfare. Iran forces defenders to split sensors, interceptors, and decision-making. Missile defense systems don't fail because they're weak, they fail because they're outnumbered, delayed, or confused. This is asymmetric warfare at its most calculated. The real impact isn't tactical, it's strategic. If even a small number of hypersonic vehicles can penetrate defenses, then forward bases become more vulnerable. Carrier strike groups face new risks. Escalation thresholds lower. Deterrence calculations shift. 
This forces the U.S. to rely more heavily on preemption, deterrence and escalation control, rather than interception alone. So can U.S. missile defense stop Iran's hypersonic glide vehicles? Sometimes? Possibly? Always? No missile defense was never meant to be perfect. Hypersonic weapons expose that reality faster than policymakers expected. The future battlefield won't be decided by one missile, but by who controls information, reaction time and decision-making under pressure. And in that race the margin for error is shrinking, 